Hello, you're watching Boris the Spider Gaming, and today we're going to have a little stab at something different, having suffered um, a terrible defeat at the hands of Tropico very recently. Uh, I'm going to be going into Democracy 3 today. Um, it is an exciting game, it just doesn't look like it. That's my take on it anyway. So, it's kind of self-explanatory, it's about democracy. So, <laughs> we're just going to go straight into it. So we're going to go in playing in the United Kingdom. So United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, commonly known, well, we know what it's called. Yada, yada, yada. Constitutional monarchy. Monarch's power is effectively ceremonial. A parliamentary system is used to elect the House of Commons under constituency-based first-past-the-post system. Whether we like it or not, that's what we have. So these are the details. We've got the population. The life expectancy is pretty good compared to other parts of the world. Uh, inequality index 41. I shouldn't think that's particularly great. Um, poverty. So anyway, this is all from, you know, about 10 years ago. Perhaps more than 10 years ago, but probably about 10 years ago. Um, so it will have changed. I'm quite sure there's a lot more poverty than there was 10 years ago. And more inequality. But anyway, I'm not sure what the Big Mac index is. But I bet the obesity rate's probably gone up as well. And as for the tea consumption, well, worrying times, isn't it? So we're going to have to choose a name for our party. Uh, what should we call it? Should we call it one of these, or should we make up our own party? I think we've got to call our own Who Likes to Party. And our opposition will be... Hmm... the National Front. But what if I lose? What if I'm not very good at this game and I just lose the game? That means the National Front will be running things. Oh, I've got a real problem here. Um. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Let's just go with, I don't know, the Freedom Party. That could be anything, couldn't it? Or does that sound a bit far right as well? Anyway, we're not going to worry about it too much because um, this is just a game. So this is the presets we come with. Term length four years as we know. There's no limit. Uh, there are limits in some countries such as the US. Uh, Obama out. Trump in. That's due to their term limit. Um, we have a monarchy. We don't have compulsory voting. I know they do in some countries. Is it Australia have compulsory voting? We don't have that many earthquakes. Not yet. Not until we get a bit more of that fracking underway and hurricanes uh well they want to the blue moon so we're going to keep everything as it is political apathy is quite high innate liberalism's high innate socialism and difficulty all on 100 percent so i'm not going to play around with these things we're just gonna we're just going to go with what we have click to return to government congratulations on your election victory thank you it's about time Welcome to your new job as Prime Minister. The lives of all 63,046,000 citizens are now in your hands. As you will imagine, there are a number of situations and concerns that you need to deal with as soon as possible, while keeping an eye on the long-term improvement of our citizens' quality of life. Please do not forget that you face re-election in four years, so you'll need to monitor the opinion polls and our party membership. Good luck. Well, four years is a long time in politics. So these are the problems we have when we start off with. Crime is awful and it's going up. It's maximum and it's going up. So that, that's pretty bad. Poverty is quite bad. But that's going up. Unemployment, we've got a problem there. Um, health and education are look like moderate concerns. So this is where we play the game from. So this is where everybody thinks of us by and large. So having just won an election, it looks like we're pretty unpopular, which I don't understand. Maybe we really fluffed it up at the uh, acceptance speech. Maybe we maybe we did something terrible. But anyway, um so socialists are moderately happy. Capitalists aren't happy. Um ethnic minorities not over the moon. Retired people are very happy environmentalists, so yada yada, you get the gist of it, I don't need to go through all of these. 
So that is our political capital. So we get political capital points. We need those. We spend those. That is our political currency we use in order to enact new policy. Uh, that's the income of the country. That's the expenditure of the country. And that's the deficit. So we're constantly running a 70 billion loss each year. Which is cheerful thought. And that's the current debt levels we have. So, yeah, we're in a bit of a fucking pickle, aren't we? To be honest. And 2006, this would have been before the banking collapse. So, fuck only knows what it would look like now. Anyway. So, this is where we got our security briefing. With a horrible, horrible noise. So, there were no concerns here. We've got the Wildlife Trust uh, Patriot Party... Farmer Society, and anyway, all these, there's no concern at this stage. Sure there will be. And here we have our opinion polls. So, there's not really much going on there. Focus groups. Oh, I'm not sure I've ever seen this before. So... There's all this shit. We're not going to worry about that for now. And all this shit. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment either. So, that's where we seem to start off as default. I don't know if it's going on how I've played this game before. Um, don't want to. That's probably a bit of a spoiler in itself. But anyway. So, what are we going to do? I think that we should address the crime problem because that was out of control wasn't it it was maximum and gonna get worse somehow so if we have a look at vigilante mobs for example we can see that the police force has an influence on it has a negative effect on it growing if that makes sense racial tension we can see the green going down to it that means it grows it I think green rather than good for it grows it Crime obviously grows it massively. You can see that that's going bananas there. And um, because of vigilante mobs, um, it causes ghettos. We can see down there on the right. Um, and I think it means that people vote conservative. And of course racial tension has a part in that. But vigilante mobs also affects tourism. Because, um, well, just because... So that's kind of the way the game works with all these things. So if we have a look at... Here we go. Uh, income tax. We can see that it has an, an influence on social, what socialists think of us. Um, if we raise income tax, socialists um, like us. Because income tax is a progressive tax. Middle income don't like it. Because they don't like any sort of tax. Uh, capitalists don't like it. Uh, because they'll pay as much percentage of tax as poor people. Um, the wealthy aren't very fond of income tax either. Um, but if you raise income tax, um, it has a positive effect on equality. Again, because it's a progressive tax. Everyone's taxed according to their income. So we've got other issues here. Um, it, it also has a negative effect on high earnings, poor earnings as well, somehow middle earnings. So basically anyone who earns anything is going to be slightly brought down by an increase in tax. So we've had a look at crime, we've had a look at tax. What else can we have a quick look at? Um, what's this? Oil demand. Okay, so the bus usage over here, that has an effect on oil demand, as does car usage, rail usage, air travel, oil price. Um, Energy efficiency would bring down oil demand, as we can see down here. Whereas, of course, those other things, such as car, rail, bus usage, increase it. Um, GDP, that also... I don't know why that's a grey one. I, I don't know why. Well, maybe we'll come back to that. Um, so, basically, we can do that with any of these. It's actually quite interesting. You spend quite a long time just looking at all the different limited automated trading. <laughs> okay. Like I say, we'll come back to that. But in the meantime, let's, once again, have a look at what our main problems were. Where, where can we see that? Is that here? No. 
No, it wasn't. Was it here? No. Where was it? Um. Oh, we've already done that. It's a horrible noise. Uh, polling? No. Income? No. That's quite interesting, though, but we don't need that right now. Policy ideas? Mm, yeah, well, we'll definitely be coming back to that in a minute. But I really wanted to do... Oh, God, these were my achievements I've achieved. You don't want to see those right now. Um, and these are cabinet, cabinet ministers. These are important guys um, and girls. So we appoint people into the cabinet. Um, each one of these brings a different vo different uh, amount of political capital, which is the fist you can see, depending on how loyal they are to me. So we can see that the Transport Secretary, Dennis Diaz, he's, he's very big on being on my side. He's great. We're very fond of him. And likewise. Whereas maybe the Minister of Law and Order, Jamie King, maybe his his loyalty could be falling into question soon. Hmm. But he's a socialist and a trade unionist, so... Hmm. We've actually so... My God, I've never seen so many socialists on a... Well, anyway. We've obviously got a lot of work to do to try and keep those guys loyal and to keep these political points up so that we can actually do stuff um, and not become some sort of a lame duck Prime Minister. So... I wish I could remember how to bring up a previous screen. Uh, nope, not that. Not that. Oh, God. Okay, well... Oh, OK, we're well, just going to have to my, take my word for it. You can somehow, and I'm sure we'll figure it out again soon. But anyway, let's go and have a look at some policy. So I think, like I said earlier, crime. That's organised crime. Alcohol abuse. <gasps> Gosh. Um, so, yeah, I think crime's a big concern. And so is homelessness. And look how complicated homelessness is. Um, immigration, poverty, unemployment benefit, state housing, street gangs, property tax. This game is really very complex, so let's have a look at what policy ideas we can come up with. So, so crime we were looking at, weren't we? Law and order, what can we do here? Gated communities. A drastic solution to serious street crime and vandalism. Gated communities are basically self-policed residential areas. They are popular with the wealthy, but often associated with class divide and inequality, as only the relatively wealthy can afford to live inside them. As a result, some governments are reluctant to permit their construction. Well, we're definitely not going to do that, because that's kind of um, not solving the problem at all. That's just rescuing a few people from it. Legalised prostitution... Conservatives claim that legalisation of prostitution would mark a severe decline in family values. That would not be my concern. Others claim, complain, com, can claim that as prostitution is likely to disappear even if illegal, it's better for society to prostitutes that the practice is regulated and monitored rather than criminalised. There's a strong case for that. But prostitution is still uh, arguably the uh, dominance and um, exploitation of women and their sexuality. So... I'm not too keen on legalising it, but I can see a strong strong case for doing so. Um, hmm. Prisoner tagging, uh, alternative to prison. Um, so that's kind of good in a way, because it's not cramming up our prisons, and hopefully it'll help people reintegrate. But some liberals are concerned that such a system is a step towards a police state which monitors every move. There is some truth in that, but if the choice is between prison or being tagged... Um, I'm not sure which is more liberal. Hmm. So, that's is that popular or unpopular? 12% popularity, so maybe that's not going to win us a lot of friends. Private prisons, I'm not sure that's going to necessarily stop the crime things. Police drones, it's a bit of a worry, isn't it? Flags on every... What sort of mental idea is that? Needle exchange programme. Uh... Needle exchange program will help addicts get clean needles for their needs while offering them help in getting clean and living a normal life again. 
that's good. That's a good idea. But I'm not sure if actually drugs w was the main problem. Whether it was just crime. Now this is a good idea. What good is catching a criminal if the witness to the crime disappears forever? Wit protecting these witnesses of utmost importance for a working justice system. And the better it is, the more criminals get convicted. And the more witnesses come forward if they see a crime. Now I like this idea. Um, it's potentially a little bit expensive, but another reason I like it is it's very popular with voters. So that's going to be the first thing we do. Um, ugh. Right, so it's going to have a small effect on violent crime and organised crime. So we've got a slider here. So if we invest less money in it, of course the effects of it diminish. But if we're willing to check some, chuck some extra money at it, it goes up. So we're gonna, I think we should stick it up to about 650. That's high. And we should see a sort of 7% drop in the crime. But more importantly, I'm hoping that that drop in crime is going to have um, a positive effect on other things. Uh, like we saw how everything's linked up together. So we're going to go with this. Um, and we've done that. But that costs money. We definitely need to address this deficit as well. So it's all very well just keep spending money. We need to make some back. So, I, at this point of the game, would always like to go to... Uh, maybe property tax? Uh, alcohol tax, maybe? I don't know. No, I wouldn't like alcohol tax. Uh, capital gains tax? That's a good one. Um, but then again, the, the problem is capitalists are really pretty angry with us already. So would that just be pushing the apple cart over? Um, petrol tax? That could be good. That could be very good. Um, but we're pleasing the environmentalists are already very happy with us. Um, would bring down car usage, which in turn would bring down oil demand. Oh dear. It's an asthma, epide asthma epidemic. Um, so we want to bring down car usage. And we can bring down car usage by increasing petrol tax. So it's currently set at 23%. Make me very unpopular, I think. Shit. So it's already enacted, so I don't know if we want to change it. Probably not. Uh, what have we got here? Corporation tax? Yes. Hmm. But we've also got a desperately uncompetitive economy. So what do you do? It's not easy. Let's go and have a look at some more policies. Uh, let's see if we can make some money through some fair taxes. Punitive tax on superstores. I like that and everyone else likes that. Hmm. That's definitely a th consideration. Public tax returns. Um, that's a nice idea. I like that. That's making everybody's tax returns public so everyone can see. Uh, punitive wealth tax. That's always good. Um, that's... Uh, almost certainly going to happen at some point because that can bring in some serious money uh, we can legalise and tax recreational drugs um, so let's do that let's do this, let's tax superstores um, so capitalists don't like that, it'll bring down the GDP a little bit, which is something we should always seek to avoid wherever we can the self-employed will be very fucking happy. And what's the difference between these two? Self-employed membership. Self-employed. I'm not sure what the difference is in that, but they're both happy, and that's all we're interested in. Uh, it'll bring down car usage as well. That's that's a I hadn't thought of that. That's a brilliant idea. Environmentalists and socialists like it, so we're going to do that, and we're going to stick it up a little bit. We're going to whack it up to. <laughs> we can't stick it up that much, I don't think. Uh, so, let's make it 50. 
percent. That's going to bring in so much money. Let's do that. Okay, now let's scoot on to the next year because if we've caused uh, a massive problem, um, we'd rather find out about it sooner than later. I don't know what part of the world in, you're in right now, but in England we've been told we're going to have loads of snow. And we did... Oh my God! There was a bit of snow overnight in Brighton. I could see it on the top of one of the cars. I had no idea. None of it settled where I am. But um, a bit of snow in Brighton, that's rare. Jesus Christ, it's just started snowing as I said that. Very light. But anyway, you're not... This isn't uh, Boris the Spider's weather commentary video. Let's crack on with this. Um, you see how easily I get distracted. So crime is still a very big problem. Um, maybe we need more funding for the police. Let's look into that. Let's look into that. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, unemployment. Ooh. Hmm. We can have to think of a way of generating work for people. Uh, GDP slightly going up, which is very good to hear. Mm. But we definitely need to do something about poverty as well. So we need to invest money in schools, perhaps, but certainly the police. Okay, so... Um, oh, I missed out on that, didn't I? Uh, there are demands from the police for the power to stop and search people on the street if they believe an individual may be guilty of a crime. Currently our police cannot search someone without formally arresting them. So we could introduce the powers. This would be a valuable weapon again the fight against crime and should have a noticeable impact on violent and street crime especially. If our citizens have nothing to hide then they have nothing to fear from the law. That's a very problematic last sentence there. We leave it unchanged which is a dangerous move. It's wide open to abuse on racial grounds and we will further distance the police from the community. Um, I think we're going to have to leave it unchanged. I can, s I can see why that might be a good idea, but let's not increase tensions. And, you know, if, somebody's, if there's enough of a reason to search someone, there should be enough of a reason to arrest someone. So let's leave it unchanged. I know we said we're going to attack crime, that might sound like a wimpy way of not addressing it, but I think that's a good call. So, what did we say? We need to generate some jobs. Hmm. Smooth. Can we do anything to please capitalists? Um. Um. Oh, God, crime's still out of control. Um, alcohol abuse, that's a problem. Ah, police force. We are going to spend some money on the police force. Okay, so I think that's going to be money well spent. Let's whack that right up. Okay, so hopefully that's going to have a big effect. Um, that's also just spent a serious amount of money. Um, bollocks. So we're going to have to raise some money somehow. Um, uh, what, what can we do? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, bus subsidies. Can't, oh, all these things are great, but this is all more ways of spending money, not ways of making money. Apart from toll roads. But that's a, a small amount of money. Is this a good idea? So basically, uh, uh, it's applying market forces, which isn't the panacea to the world's problems. It charges people for using particular roads. Motorists tend to see this as just another form of taxation. Whereas commuters, and I'm quite sure other taxpayers, would appreciate not being charged for the roads they seldom use. So that is popular, but uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, tax incentive for people to work at home. Again, we, we need to be making money, not um, not spending it. So, what can we do to make some money? Ban divorce. No, that's a really stupid idea. Um, 
internet censorship, we don't want any of this. Uh, none of this is going to make us any money. Public services. Um, oh god, I want to implement all of these. This will... That's... Let's implement this. I know this is spending money, but this is hopefully also going to be another attack on our crime. Let's do that. It's... Oh my god. We need to... Has our deficit gone down? I think our deficit's gone down. I guess that must have been all the money we're bringing in from the supermarket tax. So that was a really good idea, I think. Um, but we still need to generate more money. Um, how can we raise money? Economy. Um, um, again, there all seems to be ways of spending money. Tax. Let's have a look at luxury goods tax. Yes, let's do that. Yeah, fuck the rich people in there. Yeah, let's go with this. Who cares? Eighteen point five seven billion a quarter. Or well, maybe we should bring that down a little bit. Wow. Okay, that's that's a lot of money. That's a very impressive amount of money. So let's see where that leaves us now. Um, crime isn't going up. Unemployment's going down. But so is the GDP. So our last poll puts us at 22, which I think is up on the last one, which is good. Um, there's an urgent issue here. Debt collection agencies have been in the news because of the aggressive methods they are using to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money, and presumably small sums of money as well. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate, so we can choose to limit it, which along the lines of these agencies are preying on the weakest and poorest in our society, often tricking them into borrowing money, exorbitant rates that can never be repaid. This is little more than extortion, and the government should act at once to limit severely the activities of such unscrupulous bastards, uh, companies. Or we can allow them to operate. Nobody forces people to borrow money they can't repay, and to restrict the rights of debt agencies to recover legitimate debts would be counterproductive. People need to learn... That's a lot of shit. We're not even going to finish reading that. Yeah, they're parasites. Let's let's uh, legislate on them. Um, so, our ministers are loyal. Uh, the effectiveness is generally considered as passable. Now, for a, for a cabinet, being passable is extraordinarily good, in my opinion. Um, uh, our budget report, our credit rating agency is set at B. This is a bad sign. Okay, so that's going to cost us more money. Um, and a lovely little quote from Tarek at the bottom there. So, look at that. We're running a surplus and not a deficit of £18 billion. So already, by taxing the rich, we're making money now. We're actually making money. Um, so, that is fantastic. So now I think, um, maybe we should have a look at schools, because I know that... Um, Okay, so that doesn't really affect that. Where's the schooling? Public services. That's healthcare. Um, that's doing alright. The capitalists don't like public healthcare. Abortion law. Um, that seems alright where it is. Seems to be a sort of balancing act there. Um, okay, so that could be a good way of affecting poverty for a positive change um, we don't need to do anything with that right now food standards agency mm -hmm. what should we spend uh, maybe we should spend some money on some science funding because that would create jobs it would help our unemployment and it would Oh my god, that's a lot of money. Um, actually, no, that seems to be bad for a lot of reasons. 
I'm a bit confused by that. We're not going to go with that. Sorry. I've changed my mind. Education. Uh, well, let's just have a look at the po up here again, quickly. Um, public services. I like this. Free school, meals. That's a very good use of money. Technology colleges? That'd be a good idea. That would help jobs, wouldn't it? Art subsidies. Mm, yeah, I quite like the idea of art subsidies. Healthcare vouchers. No, definitely not. Um, ban private education. Ban private healthcare. We're not going to do that at this stage. I'm, I'm not sure about banning it. Um, I'd like to make such a point where you wouldn't need, would simply wouldn't need it. Um, compulsory foreign languages. I like that idea. Um, youth politics council. Uh, I like the idea of it, but I'm not quite sure what it's going to have a direct effect upon. We really want the stuff to have a, a very positive, quick effect. God, that's expensive. Very expensive. Let's go with... So why is that so unpopular? Adult education subsidies. Surely that's a good thing. Free school meals. Let's implement free school meals. Because that's going to stop poverty. And let's also... Let's do this as well. Because that's going to help our GDP, our productivity. So, going to click next here. We don't want to ever do too much in one sitting because uh, it's quite easy to get carried away especially when you do have political capital which we do right now click to return to government uh oh general strike <laughs> that'll teach me okay well we're going to call that a day there um, I think it's been fun uh, it's uh, it's an interesting game um, It's it, you can lose yourself in it quite easily um, to be honest with you, I can understand it perhaps being very dull to watch. Uh, certainly dull if you're not interested in politics or anything like that. But um, it's on Steam, it's available. It's um, it's good fun. And I played quite a lot of it a few years ago. But um, anyway, if you'd like to see more of this or more of anything else, simply let me know. And of course, as ever, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please subscribe and give us a like. And um, let us know what you'd like me to do. Apart from fuck off. Bye.